these guys survived the David Kahn era of Timberwolves basketball and lived to tell about it. It's Flagrant Howls. Kyle, how did you take in uh, the latest Timberwolves victory over one of the top teams, supposedly, in the National Basketball Association last night? Well, happy Monday. I, uh, uh, hello, I, sir. Yeah. Good to see you. I tweeted this out last night, but it was a real thing. I know a lot of my tweets can be silly and foolish and, and mostly dumb, <laughs> but uh, it, it was sad. I, I left that game sad and, and feeling empathetic and sympathetic uh, towards a group of people that we should always respect in life, and that's our elders. Um, <laughs> because... Yeah. Just like another boxing analogy, the Timberwolves, again, for 48 minutes, just leaned on the Golden State Warriors and eventually just a couple punches in the third, early fourth, kind of put them on the ropes. And that led to Chris Paul torpedoing at Mike Conley's knees, Draymond yeah. Green, all while posting like eight points and six rebounds, barking at Ant. What are you uh, going to do about it? Uh, I don't know, just dagger you in the fourth quarter, I guess? Calm down it was, a it was. It was just, again, I texted my dad this morning. It reminded me of when that final age, when I started to become like a teenager, where I started to just bully my dad in the driveway, and my dad had no other like plan than to just kind of try to hard follow me or cheap shot me. You just watched, uh, and you're starting to see this more and more, the Timberwolves defense is so good. And we know all the stats, and I'm sure we'll talk about some today, but they're so good, and now they're so frustrating that they're really starting, you're starting to see other teams around the league. Like that last night, what Chris Paul did and Draymond Green did showed me a team that was like acknowledging that they're falling behind and that the Minnesota Timberwolves are ascending right in front of our eyes and the rest of the Western Conference and the entire league. In fact, that was actually, I was trying to think of like, what's my general like summation take from watching that game last night? And I would say, and you can call this a hot take. It sounds like you aren't going to call this a hot take because I think you <laughs> fully agree. But, like, here is my hot take, I guess, off last night's game. That if you told me right now, Phil, or if I told you, Kyle, make a case for the Tim- uh, make a case for this year's Warriors being better than this year's Timberwolves. I don't know. Dude, like, I took argument analysis in college. I took persuasion theory. And, like, I took some fun <laughs> classes in college, like. I, we once had a, a class where the final exam or like not the exam, but like the final uh, presentation was I think it was um, I think it was argument analysis. It was the class at the University of Minnesota. And you had to pick a celebrity or a prominent figure in history. And you were that person. And then you sat up on stage with five other people. So, Kyle, you could choose to be Michael Jackson. And producer Ross could choose to be uh, Tim Brewster, former Gophers coach or whoever, right? <laughs> and I chose to be strategically Thomas Edison, who invented essentially what? You know, uh, the light bulb, right? Yeah. And so the, uh, the stick with me here. So you had to sit up there and argue why you deserve to be the last person standing, like why, you, why your contribution to the world is so important that you had to argue why you should be the one that's up there last, right? So like, I feel like I can argue pretty much anything if you tell me to. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I can make any sort of coherent argument that this year's version of the Warriors is better than this year's version of the Timberwolves. And it played itself out. And by the way, I think it's going to play itself out again tomorrow night in the in-season tournament. They're playing back-to-back in San Francisco. I mean, like basketball, you're not guaranteed to win every game, but like there is a definitive gap between these two teams from what my eye test tells me, Kyle. Yeah, and obviously to give them a little dose of credit, Golden State was on the second night of a back-to-back last night. Um, so they, you know, tired legs or whatever. I would imagine, especially with Tuesday's game now being the in-season tournament, they are going to throw their best at Minnesota. But to your point, I'm not sure it matters. Uh, and this ties into, I want to answer your question about the Warriors versus the Wolves, but also I like Friday's game, because now we're doing this after two wins since we last spoke. They beat the Spurs on Friday. I missed that game live. I was doing a, a quick tangent, but if I was doing Special Olympics volunteering for soccer, if if anyone's listening to this and has free time or wants to give back to the community, Special Olympics in Minnesota, Oregon, wherever you're at, a uh, really good organization, you should try to volunteer. But anyway, I, I didn't, I stayed offline Friday night and kind of like last night too. I just found myself when I actually rewatched the game, Phil, not being that concerned. Like just kind of being like, like that first quarter against the Spurs was pretty bad, actually that first half, but I just, old me would have started to panic 
and like halftime would have been like, who are we trading? Or like, is someone going to get fired? Is someone going to demand a trade? Hyperventilation Kyle would have been in play. Like, there's a new maturity level around the fan base where you just kind of like, okay, like first quarters are always a feel it out type of thing. Second quarter, halftime, the team makes adjustments. Ant said last night that Elston Turner, who's new to Chris Finch's staff, cussed him out at halftime and was like, we didn't want to get cussed out again. There's just this vibe around the team now. You're just, yeah, I don't know. That wasn't great. That wasn't great, but they'll figure it out. And now circling back to the Warriors, I don't know if there's a war. I watched them play the Nuggets last week, and it was pretty tough because they don't really have size to stop Jokic. I don't know if there's any team in the league right now that's a worse matchup for them because the Warriors are, they have old legs, they're small, and yeah, they got a couple offensive rebounds last night, but they have no answer for multiple guys on the Wolves. Like if Carl yeah. steps out, they're in trouble. Rudy was so disrespectful to Draymond Green. He was giving him eight, nine feet and just daring him to shoot, and Draymond wouldn't do it. Um, the way that the Wolves, the, one of the trends of this team right now is watch how they fight around screens. It's a dedication level that no other team, I mean this, no other team in the league does right now. They battle around screens, and if you prevent the Warriors from getting into their flow, it's bad. And all of a sudden last night you looked up and it was a 16-point game, and I know it got weird at the end, but... I'm with yeah, you, man. They're the, just the a end. better roster from top to bottom. They've missed the Warriors have missed on multiple draft picks with Kaminga and Wiseman and Moody. It's just all credit to the Warriors for being the probably the last dynasty of our lifetime. But this is just one team is eating steak and one team is eating saltine crackers. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna make a note here. I oftentimes I just have like a notebook where because we go on side tangents all the <laughs> <Yeah>. time. We need <laughs> to go on side relationship tangents. Relationship advice again. Um, we could, yes. <laughs> we need to go on on a side tangent about the end of the game, but let's let's put that. Yes, off the I side. would like to do that too. Super yes. weird, mm-hmm. super weird for both teams. But then they, it was like we'll get into it. But like let's like if we just made a checklist, everything you're saying about like roster versus roster. If we said okay, tail of the tape, you know they put two boxers or two UFC fighters up on the screen. And and they do this with NFL teams sometimes, right? Running game, defense, right? Okay, defense, check Timberwolves. Even if the Warriors decide, which they do sometimes, we're going to lock it in. Like a couple years ago, they actually had one of the best defenses in the league when they won the championship. So they they can lock it in sometimes. But, you know, some of those players two years ago that were 33 are now 35 or that were 30 are now 32. So defense, check Wolves, right? Offense, so the Warriors can obviously still explode offensively, you know, on any given night. Like, they could give you 120, 130 points. But watching that game again, they only really have one guy that can get you a bucket. Hey, we need a bucket right now. Who can we turn to? It ain't Clay Thompson anymore. Dude, that guy is, all due respect, like, that guy is a first ballot Hall of Famer. But the only player on that team right now that can get you a bucket is probably Andrew Wiggins. Or uh, it's probably Steph Curry. Andrew Wiggins is a zombie. Clay Thompson is looks like he's fifty years old. So am I wrong? Like no. when I watch that offense now? And the only thing I would push back on and say that you're wrong, but it adds to your overall point, is that uh they're six and five, the Warriors, so they're eleven games into the season. I think this stat still stands true. They've only had one player score more than twenty points in any game, and that's Steph. He's done it wow. in all eleven games. But to the idea that, you know, this team at any night can go get you one thirty, I don't know. I don't Maybe know if they not. can do that, yeah. actually, <laughs> because they have no one. Else. I mean, we, again, this and this now ties into another tangent topic about I've had some people be in my mentions and be like, oh, you know, it's too early to take a victory lap. A, as someone who loves running, it's never too early to take a lap. But B, Golden State did what they did, but we don't need to, like, live in the past. Those people, to me, are some of the biggest losers on earth. The Warriors, congrats, they, they got a title with Wiggins. Go go look Warriors Twitter. They are back to what is this dude doing? He is just getting cardio in. He has no heart. He's not doing anything it's, for it's us. It's not even good cardio. Yeah. He's just, just kind of jogging around. Well, reminds me, when you were talking about taking a class in college, I kept thinking I tried to take jogging in college, but uh, walking was a legitimate prerequisite. And I was like, I'm not taking what? a one-credit walking class. That's another tangent for uh, the University of North Dakota. What was but... your favorite pointless college class? <laughs> well... Okay, this has really dovetailed. I took a class on record keeping where we literally talked for the entire semester about different filing cabinet. It was all like paper record keeping. There's a lot that goes into it, like archiving, but it was like 20, 20, 12. I don't know how old I am, but we talked about an entire presentation on filing cabinets and file folders. And I was like, <laughs> what 
they'll bleep and, am I and doing then go, it? And then Google Drive came along the next semester. You're like, damn it. Yeah. All so, these skills I just learned. I think record keeping. But no, I just, to, to kind of close the Warriors loop, they've done what they've done. They will go down in history. They have multiple Hall of Famers on the team, but they just don't have. I mean, there's still teams in the league I think are going to give the Wolves serious issues, especially the bigger teams, the Celtics in a, you know, a potential final series or whatever, like the Nuggets, all these nuggets. teams. But, yeah, the Nuggets for sure. The size. Like Pel- Pelicans, if, if Zion ever plays in a game against yeah. the Wolves again. Yeah, but, like, that's why I'm excited. Obviously, they play the Warriors again tomorrow night in season tournament. The Warriors are going to bring their best, especially because they, they got punked last night. But uh, I'm also excited to see how they play against the Suns because the Suns don't have a ton of size and speed. And the way the Wolves just, again, lock down on defense, it goes back to my I'd rather have a f- my favorite team be defensive-oriented than offensive-oriented because the defense starts to just really frustrate people. And that's what I was talking about last night with Draymond and, and Chris Paul. Just You can start to see that frustration level. And when you're frustrated, you're out of your own head. We've seen that many times with certain Timberwolves players. Uh, and the Wolves are just humming right now. They're bullying people. They're leaning on them. And they're usually TKOing them in the ninth round. Uh yeah. Except for last night again, which maybe now would be just a quick good time to talk about uh, <laughs> the end of the game. The so end of the game. The Warriors pulled the Warriors waved the white flag first, right? They said, I think it was a ten point game with like a minute left, maybe a minute. There's like a minute eleven or something. I should have pulled the box score up. And then Steve Kerr pulled Steph. He pulled Clay Draymond. He pulled Wiggins. The whole group. So the backups come in, and Chris Fitton. Now it's funny because. I was at that Nuggets game and the Nuggets waved the white flag like three minutes before Finch pulled his starters off. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is like an 18 point game or a 15 point game. And the Nuggets are like, whatever, man. We Nice game, you guys. We won the championship. We're not about to, you know, tear someone's ankle up trying to chase 15 points, yeah. whatever. But the, but the Wolves were still in. We just blew a lead against the Hawks mode mm-hmm. and said no lead is safe. So uh, Steve Kerr waves the white flag last night, pulls the stars, and Chris Finch is like, all right, okay, I see you, Steve. Yep, we'll uh, we'll pull our guys, too. Instant, like, bang, bang, three, whatever, and now the lead's down to seven, down to five. The Wolves made a mockery of an inbound pass at one point, but it got down to a four-point game, if I'm not mistaken. And then there was a timeout. With, this is like, there's, like, time in this game. So there's a timeout. It's a four- or five-point game. Timeout ends, and both coaches leave their backups in. Why? I have been, I have said this now. My stance moving forward is I'm unapologetically pro Chris Finch. I just love everything about that man. Uh, quick little nugget he was 22 to 1 to win coach of the year uh, before the season started. He's now down to 9 to 1. He has the fourth best odds in the league, only behind. The Rockets head coach, the Celtics head coach, which is a little head scratcher, and then uh, the Thunder head coach. But I would say, as much as I love Finch, that wasn't a red flag or anything, but it was definitely like a maybe a strike. I don't know, but I think Kerr just duped him because Steve Kerr, if you go back and really watch that, he kind of pulled his guys in a strategic way. He's like, okay, white flag, like you said, it's it's all over. But then he kind of forced Finchy to pull his guys, and then I don't know if it was a pride thing, but not inserting your I mean you never want to pull your starters and then have to put them back in that's a pretty bad sign dude it was 114 to 110 with 27 seconds left after and, was it Podzimski made the 27 yep. foot 3 okay Podzimski's I think I'm saying the name wrong but Podzimski got podcast in his name uh is a rookie he had more points in 1 minute than Wiggins had in 25 minutes no big deal um but yeah so I'm looking back at the play by play they hit a 3 to make it 114 110 with 27 seconds left then Kyle Anderson turns the ball over, and the Warriors get two shots at the 16-second mark and the 12-second mark, <laughs> right. both, I think, from three that would have made it a one-point game that yeah. they missed. We're not going to ever think about it again, but I'm just telling you in the moment, that was way weirder than I ever thought it was going to yeah, be dude. because they had a chance there. I think it was Kaminga, no, Moses Moody, to, to really put that thing in a weird spot. But, um, yeah, I don't really have any other takes other than I just think – there is some late game stuff. This is why it's great, right? The Wolves are playing B, B plus basketball, but there's still some little things on the coaching staff side, on the player side, where, you know, even if you see the finish line and you're 26 miles into the marathon, close out those last couple laps. Like, just get there because you don't want to have that. That, that would have ruined not only the winning streak, but that would have ruined just 
a really well played game that the Wolves deserve to win. How often do you say that the Wolves deserve to win? They deserve to win that game, and yeah, that last minute was a, a little dicey. It was. I have another hot take. I want to just float by. Just float, here. Okay. there's no agenda today. Let's just rip off our thoughts. We will get to a Kyle's question of of the week, uh, so stay tuned for that for sure on this podcast. I got some pushback. There are some Warriors fans that saw this tweet last night. And I don't know. Maybe it was just, hey. Oh, look at you. The Vikings, had, Vikings rattled off their fifth straight win. The Wolves are the hot, The Vikings are the hottest team in the NFL, and the Wolves are the hottest team in the NBA. And I might have just been feeling it on behalf of Minnesota sports fans when I hopped on Twitter last night. But I said Anthony Edwards is the best player on a court that includes Steph Curry. And I'm not just talking about tonight. I let me see. Can I push back? I mean, I think Steph did have 38. He and, was, and again, he, yeah, he outscored Ant last night, and Ant was awful from three point range. And we'll and we'll get to Conley's uh, leadership mm. moment about that. But here, like my logic is, basketball is as the Wolves are proving. Basketball is not just an offensive game, mm-hmm. and oftentimes we just sort of like we get enamored with, oh, a guy who averages 30 points. I'm not talking about Steph Curry from five years ago either. That's he might be one of the greatest 10 players of all time. So, and he, he changed the trajectory of basketball strategy with just hitting shots from, you know, the logo. I'm not saying that like legacy versus legacy. So I'm saying right now, 35 year old Steph Curry, who's still an excellent player and emerging 22 year old Anthony Edwards defense. It's not close. You put no. Ant, you put a guy like Ant on a guy like Curry to stop a guy like Curry at the end of a game, right? And the mm-hmm. Wolves have like three guys that can kind of run at Curry in a game like that and make it harder to get 33 points. Offensively, I still take Steph on most nights, but Anthony Edwards is becoming this freight train. And again, last night, he wasn't even shooting that well. He winds up just getting to the rim, free throw line, mid range game. In terms of closing out a game, is the gap even why like, I don't even know if there is a gap between those two guys. This year's version of those two guys. So give me Ant's defense and Ant's emerging offense. I don't think it's that hot of a take. I don't think it is either. And it builds on <laughs> something I was thinking last night. Just, you know, it's late. Although it was a little earlier on the West Coast, that 530 tips. So that was nice. But uh mm-hmm. just having a glass of wine, winding down. Uh and I remember thinking like during the moment, during the games playing out, I knew Ant had that awesome baseline dunk on Saric and he had that super cool moment where he's just barking at barking back at Draymond in the most professional way ever like that video is a must watch go find it somewhere where he's mm-hmm. just he's politely being like don't follow me like that like he wasn't really even talking smack and to Draymond. well he just caches two free throws in a huge moment yeah but but I, I thought in the moment I was like you know I don't know this hasn't been a great Anthony Edwards game um team played pretty well or whatever but i don't know i just i I didn't come out of it in the moment thinking it was a great game and then after i fired some tweets off i went and looked at the box score and it's like oh he had 33 7 6 and two steals in 10 for 10 from the free throw line it's like that to me is as much as we talk about i was i was trying to google synonyms for the word leap uh because what a lot of players take leaps every year get better this isn't even like a leap i don't i don't is this a bound Uh, this is just he's he's giving you 33 7 6 and 2 and highlights and and supporting his teammates and backing him up and talking smack. And it's like, you kind of just overlook it now. That's the crazy thing. Two years ago, this would have been the brightest moment of our lives, seeing him post that type of, type of stat line. Now it's just kind of like, oh, that was a that was a B-plus game for Ant. Let's see if he can, you know, give you 40 against the sun. So I don't think the gap is nearly as wide as maybe – again, this isn't a resume thing. This isn't what player has the better career. It's Steph Curry by leaps and bounds. But – on a given night, if you're like, I need to go win a game tomorrow night, you're probably going to maybe take Steph still because of just his gravity and the way he shoots the ball. But it might not be as far-fetched to say that you could make an argument that you would take Ant because you want his two-way play and just his ability to defend. Because Steph, they really attacked Steph last night in the pick and roll. Uh, and as good as he was offensively, he was really hurting. They don't have anyone to defend when Draymond's not out there right now. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I went to thesaurus.com here just to see so words that uh, words that could be replacing the word leap here. I'm I'm, I'm on the noun tab, right? Okay. Because we're because we're saying take is, a leap yeah. would be a noun, right? We could also go to the verb tab, but just here are some noun replacements: a surge, the Anthony Edwards yeah, surge. Sur- yeah, one of my one uh, underrated soda, by the way, growing up. If any of you listen out there, drink Surge. I think it was just yeah. literally 
cocaine and chemicals in a can, but uh, great that 90s was, culture. That was like soda, the first espresso sure. I ever had was Surge. Uh, caper escalation, the Anthony Edwards escalation. There's some alliteration there. Uh, <laughs> we'll rise, that. skip, spring, vault. He's vaulting. He's vaulting. He's vaulting. Yeah, there we go. I, mean, I need Dave Ben to give me some ant facts. He probably could have <laughs> highlighted this better than I could. No, it's just, I really, I even woke up today and I was texting, like, I don't, the, the biggest takeaway from all this is just, I don't know what to do with my hands because this isn't used to celebrate. I mean, I, honestly, man, when I, when I got into this seven years ago and I was a blog boy, I remember for a while just having like a pit in my stomach on game days, like, oh God, how bad could this go tonight? And like, I almost dreaded watching the game. Yeah. And now I just kind of watch it and it like soothes me. Because I'm just like, I don't know. I don't really know how they're going to win this game. Like, they were underdogs last night, and that's, like, three-point underdogs. Like, that's crazy. That, that was the easiest take Easiest take Especially, the points. And, yeah. Yeah. So, we'll see what the line is tomorrow. Maybe they're still, you know, not favorites just because they're on the road still. But uh, it's just a team that you and I were joking about this before we went live about how we don't really – Phil and I don't do a lot of prep. Phil does all the prep. No surprise to anyone who listens to me. I just kind of come on and babble. But – uh. We don't have to like come up with things to talk about anymore. We can just be like break down plays and talk about stats because this is if you like basketball, you this is appointment viewing at this point. Like you probably even though they're going to maybe break your heart one night every now and then, if you like basketball and you like Minnesota teams, you got to start scheduling your life around this because they're playing at such an elite level. They're again, they're not just outscoring teams, they're really bullying teams and playing basketball the way it should be played. They're moving the ball on offense, they're trusting each other on defense, they're executing after timeouts. It's just, it's basketball porn for people to love the sport. Uh, and I just, I can't wait to, I think this is the fifth longest winning streak the franchise has ever had. So they're a couple games away from getting into uncharted territory. I think the largest winning streak in franchise history is 11 games. So still a little bit away from there. But if they get to that, man, we might just, I might hop on your shirtless. You know, it's, it's well, that's what people are clamoring to see. Phil and Kyle just shirtless with <laughs> Timberwolves paint all over our bodies. You know, uh, right now, I'll give you some, I'm going to give you some Timberwolves stat porn here. Please do. Uh, I was going to mm. give you Anthony Edwards stat porn, but we're going to roll it into something bigger here. And mm. Timberwolves stat porn. So they currently lead the Western Conference. They're, they're a half game back of the one seed right now in the Western Conference. And we are depending on your team, nine or 10 games into an 82 game season. So obviously, and I have just spent the first 20 minutes of this podcast, a hundred percent jinxing them for tomorrow night. <laughs> They're going to lose now by like 15 points tomorrow night because of everything I just said. Sorry about that. Uh, but they lead the Western conference in net point differential. So they're a pl just under a plus 10 point differential per game. The, there's only one team within like five miles of them defensively in terms of uh, average points per game allowed. So the Wolves are averaging, giving up 103 points per game, and they have the number one defensive uh, rating in the NBA. The Rockets, who are the surprise team in the league so far, starting six and three, are three points worse defensively per game. But then like you got to get, I mean, the Nuggets are 106, I guess. But like the Mavericks are a half game up on the Wolves in the Western Conference. The Mavericks are giving up 14 more points per game. Now they score 12 more points per game too, but it's just fascinating to see how the Wolves are doing it compared to uh, some of the other teams. On the Anthony Edwards front, here's some Anthony Edwards stat porn. He's now a top 10 scorer in the NBA, 28 points per game. He is solidly in the top 10 of all scorers. Win shares, he's 12th right now, actually tied with Conley and Gobert, who are also having great starts to the season. He's 12th in win shares. Uh, player efficiency rating. He's in the top 20, and he's ahead of Kyrie, Damian Lillard, Paul George, Jimmy Butler, Trey Young, and other household name superstars that you're used to seeing in the top 20 for player efficiency rating. So, dude, it is, uh, it's like the most fun first month of a Wolves season. I, I was going to say since 03, 04, but that first month wasn't even fun because they were losing. They were like nine and nine in their first 18 games. Mm -hmm. And then they got it rolling in like January. This might be the most fun start to a wolf season in my life. That's there, there's your third hot take of the show. This is the most fun start to a wolf season in my life watching this franchise. I don't know how, I don't know how this happened, but I just woke up Saturday morning and I caught an episode, one of the episodes of the last dance. It was I think my wife wanted to watch a part or something. But anyway, so I'm watching like mm -hmm. episode five or whatever. And all I, I should have texted you in the moment. All I could think about during that, because I don't know if you saw last week, late last week, there was 
some viral tweet about an anonymous Western Conference scout yeah, describing how has- Anthony Edwards um, is literally the next Michael Jordan. And yeah, I was watching the last dance. Take. And again, people are hearing this now. I'm going to bring us all down a little. Like, there is probably a, as close to a 0% chance as humanly possible that Ant will ever do what Michael Jordan did. Again, let's just like Michael Jordan. But the fact that we're even talking about it and you're starting to see these cool like TikTok edits of the same baseline moves they make for a dunk or these flying through the air or just the way that like they take people talking smack to them and just politely, calmly answer those questions and those comments by just their play. Just the fact that we're making sentences with our mouths that have Michael Jordan and Anthony Edwards in the same sentence (laughs) <laughs> backs up what you just said. Like, this is what, the most would, fun I've ever had would, doing this. So it, it was an anonymous scout, right? It was like somebody I mean, I'm a financial analyst, but if people think I'm also scouting, then yeah, they can call me whatever they want. But they said that it was, <laughs> they, they, was they described him as the next Michael Jordan. So, But why would, even if you know that you're you're speaking to a reporter under the condition of anonymity, you don't have to say that, right? Like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's why yeah, yeah. You, could, you could have said... He's a mini version, you know, or he's Dwayne Wade would have been, whoa, that's mm. crazy, right? He's, uh, the, I think the, the two untouchable names to compare any player to directly are LeBron James and Michael Jordan, mm-hmm. right? I think you could, you could make a magic comparison and people would be like, whoa, that's lofty, but yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I guess, but to to say i mean people have made the appearance comparison cuz he kind of looks like michael yeah. jordan right they're yeah. like the mm-hmm. same size uh, i think michael was a little bit leaner and more wiry early in his career ant has like a bigger frame but their face if if ant shaved his head he would look a lot like michael jordan from yeah. early in his mm-hmm. career but i think what gets me is that an nba scout could have said anything to that reporter yep and it, and it and it's not like the NBA scout was saying, I need to come up with a hot take for a podcast. Like, it's anonymous. You can say whatever you want. Like, you can just say what you think. And that person thinks that Anthony Edwards is going to be a generational championship winning player. And I don't like, I don't know what to make of that. It's really it interesting that someone inside the game would say that. Right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's, again, it's, it's, like, it's a bridge too far. But And, and I, it, this isn't like Bill Russell or some of the older generations of just super, super Hall of Fame players like were before my time. I got into basketball because I was watching Channel 7 in North Dakota, WGN of like Chicago Bulls game. So I'm very familiar with Michael Jordan's game. Uh, And again, Michael Jordan is the best player to ever play basketball. And at this current moment, Anthony Edwards isn't even the best Timberwolf player to play basketball. But again, the fact that people that aren't us, Flagrant Howell's co-hosts, making those types of takes are just insane to me and i will i want to say quick because i our agenda today is just tweets and dms that i had last night but um my guy i think it's wilder adams on twitter sent me this kind of comp and i think you'll appreciate it because you're a historian but this iteration of the wolves right now is kind of like if that pistons team a few years back would have drafted Dwayne wade because they had this all world rim protector in ben wallace they had this kind of stretch four before his time in Rashid Wallace, Carl Anthony Towns, they had a stable point guard, floor um, general point floor guard, general, who could knock and then down they had threes. this lengthy, gangly power, or small forward in Tayshawn Prince that was kind of mm-hmm. their stop stopper on the defensive end as Jaden. And instead of drafting Darko, you just plug Dwayne Wade in there. I mean, R.I.P. to Rip Hamilton, who would have been moved to the bench, but say he would have been six man of the year coming off the bench, right? Yeah, yeah, but I just thought that was a good comp too because the Dwayne Wade stuff. I mean, I'm going to stick with Dwayne Wade comps over MJ for a while just to not sound like a complete lunatic, but uh, <laughs> yeah. he does it He does it all. I mean, his defense, again, his ability to make plays, flying around in transition. He had one last night where it was towards the end of the game, and he got the ball, I think, on a rebound. And it's like, okay, everyone just slow down. Like, let's run the ball. Let's use up the whole shot clock. And he's like, no, actually, I'm just going to sprint down court by Andrew Wiggins, by former defensive player of the year, Draymond Green, and just get a layup. Like, I don't have, I don't have the angle. I don't have the distance. Everyone's in front of me, but I'm just going to get to the rim. And it's like, holy bleep, man. Like what? I watched Luke Rittenauer play shooting guard on purpose. Like this is crazy. (laughs) So he's shooting at the rim. I just pulled this up to Anthony Edwards, 76% at the, uh, but from three feet in, according to basketball reference, that's insane for a guard. 
Mm-hmm. Steph, Steph, I think Steph Curry, Dejounte Murray, and um, I don't have the rest of the list pulled up in front of me, but there's like two other guys, and I can't, I was looking this up earlier. He's like top five among guards right now, and now of course, I'm with you. Any Michael Jordan comparison is laughable, probably forever, mm-hmm. but especially until he like wins three championships before you know the age of 33. So let's st- I'm with you. Let's stick with the Dwayne Wade comparison here, knowing that maybe once in a while we're using Dwayne Wade as code for Michael Jordan. Yeah, okay. like again, like fair? University of North Dakota. Let's walk before we can jog. Uh, let's set a prerequisite of Dwayne Wade. But I'm just saying that when you start to see those comps, and it's 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 not the resume thing again. We get it, but it's just the mannerisms and the way he flies through the air or the way he just puts this serious game face on in a moment where. They're, the noise is the loudest, whether it be on the court or in the stands, and he just is a killer. That's really – it's crazy. Like, again, no offense to any Wolves alum of the past, but dating back till since Kevin Garnett was here, the Wolves haven't had, like, a ser- like a serious killer, and that's what Ant is. He's a killer. Uh, they coasted – we should probably 31 minutes into this podcast mention that Cronthay Towns is hooping because uh, he, he is, was great again last night. He's knocking down threes. Yep. And I think Finchie said that post game like that's kind of the formula right now right like let carl chew a bunch of innings early he's unguardable right now when he's hitting those threes we'll play defense and then ant will close it out and that's the exact recipe they had last night against golden state yep you've wanted to trade cat for two years now it's a good thing i keep talking you off that uh hey before we get to uh another talker from that game which is mike conley showing great leadership Mm. Mm. i'd like to draw your attention and the audience's attention to uh it's so let me explain it this way. We are looking to get behind great causes at Score North and give to the max day is this Thursday, Kyle. So secondhand hounds is something that hits close to home for me, for Judd, for Declan, and others at Score North, and that we're all big time dog people. And secondhand hounds is a nonprofit animal rescue based in Minnesota that provides safe shelter for our furry friends. Proper veterinary care, daily necessities for animals at risk all while working hard to find each of them a permanent loving home. And so we ask if you've got $5, if you've got $500, or if you just signed a big NBA contract and you've got more, looking at you, Jaden, if you go to scorenorth.com slash donate, that's scorenorth.com slash donate. Uh, Our friends at Nutrisource, by the way, are going to be matching up to $1,000 raise. So we're just looking to help our furry friends, give them some love, give them new homes and uh, secondhand hounds is the vehicle for that scorenorth.com slash donate and if you're someone who i i get a lot of these still but if you're looking phil and i and dane we're all doing well we're 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 okay we don't need any financial support but if you're looking to give back to the show or to the people that you enjoy their content those ways are awesome um dogs are the greatest animal on earth and adopting pets and, and putting them in good homes is the utmost importance in my life as well. So uh, that's a that's awesome. I'm glad to be a part of that. I'm going to donate as soon as we shut this thing down now. So uh, thanks for thanks for their partnership. And yeah, please, please support great organizations like that. Amen, my friend. Amen. So last night, uh, we have a, a, a cavalcade of Wolves beat writers out on the West Coast right now. Yeah, the guy Dane Moore is out there. And uh, Chris Hine from the Star Tribune has this quote here from Anthony Edwards in the post game. So Ant, it was a really bad shooting night, and he made it better at the end by just getting to the rim and getting inside. He turned like a 30% shooting night into a 40% shooting night, so it looked better at the end, and it helped close the game. But he kept jacking up threes. It was like he 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 really wanted that dagger three about halfway through the fourth quarter, and it just wasn't falling. He missed like three or four. At one point, he was one for nine. I don't know what he finished. Uh, but But he said... Mike Conley tells me, no more threes, man. Just get inside the three-point line. It ain't falling for you tonight. He pretty much just told me to get to the free throw line. My mid-range started falling late, and that helped a lot. What do you make of Mike Conley pulling Anthony Edwards aside? This is Anthony Edwards' team, but Mike Conley is the grizzled floor general and I think the wise old sage sort of leader of the, uh, the room. And he pulls Anthony Edwards aside and says, dude, stop. Stop pulling up from 26 feet. It's not working for you tonight. And Ant said, cool, gotcha, man. And he knocks down a bunch of key free throws. I mean, I think it, it says more about you and I than it does about Mike, right? Because we had given Mike the number one slot in the leadership power rankings. 
Uh, but it just Clearly. backs up that. I mean, it really, it all jokes aside, and this is a fun podcast, but I subscribe, I love managerial stuff. I love leadership stuff. I can't get enough of books and just philosophies and all that stuff. Yeah. And I, I, I've covered so many bad teams, and anyone listening to this has followed essentially a bad basketball team for as long as they've been alive. That stuff is just as important as any of the transactions, the stuff you love, salary cap, second apron, any of that jazz. It, it's just, I always say, we watch these guys play basketball for two or three hours every other night. They're hanging out all the time. Like, it's not even like your work colleagues. Like, these are like your family members. You're on the bus, you're on the plane, you're going to shoot arounds and stuff. And there's just so much interaction we never see. And that was one of them last night. Mike Conley, we didn't see that. We didn't pick that up on the mics. But he is just everything this team needs. And it goes back to your take last week about the D'Angelo Russell trade maybe being one of the best trades in franchise history. Just to get out a guy who probably had different philosophies on leading, let's just say that, yeah. and replace him with a guy like Mike Conley, who, by the way, like Mike Conley was, what, the third overall pick in a draft well, a long time ago? Like, he's really not just player. a yeah. guy. I mean, Pat Bev is a legend around here, but his way into the league is just so much different. It's more like the Nas Reed thing than it is like the Conley Towns ant highly drafted. But Mike Conley has done this before. He's played with Greg Oden, and he's played with those really good Grizzlies teams. He's been in big spots, and he knows what it takes to win. I know that sounds so cheesy, but it's a real thing. And last night, Mike was like, dude, you're just, I think he told that you're short on all these threes. Get to the rim. So what does he do? 10 for 10 from the free throw line. And I love that stuff. I think that's the next elevation leap, whatever synonym we want to use for Ant, is that getting to the free throw line when you're as good at shooting free throws as Ant is, is just a, a killer as well because it just slows the game down, gives your guys time. I mean, defense is a lot of work. Gives them time to rest. Gives them time to regroup. Get their defense set. And it's just free points. And when Ant starts to embrace as much as he loves that knockout three, when Ant starts to embrace free points, yeah. that's how you become a scoring title winner. That's how you become a super duper star. It's how Harden did it when he ate vegetables. It's how Luca did it. Like you have to get free points because those are great little ways to give your team a little boost to to help win. Dude, the Con the, the Conley conversation has me thinking too. I get what the Warriors are doing with Chris Paul. Like, hey, we we can bring guys yeah. into our mm -hmm. culture here. He looks. Usually it takes them until the end of the year once they get to, like, game five of the finals. And then it's like, oh, God, Chris Paul turned into a pumpkin. He looks old and slow, and I think he looked cooked. I don't know. Maybe he just needs some time to settle in. He's shooting, like, 36%. He can't knock down a three. He's already playing limited minutes. Uh, you know, Conley would actually be – if the Warriors right now with a clear conscience could swap Chris Paul for Mike Conley, if you gave him that option, I bet they would. But then it got me to thinking – Back to our sort of the conversation we started the show with the Warriors versus the Wolves. If we let's let's put Steph Curry across both rosters as the best player. Let's say he's the best player. If you combined both rosters, Steph Curry. I know my hot take about Anthony Edwards, but let's say Steph Curry's the best, right? How many Wolves would you have to go through, starting with the second best player, before you got to another Warrior? Oh, I love these. I love like this is like a Super Bowl matchup where it's like there's two teams like oh let's draft just the best players yeah so like who's the second best warrior right now is it looney is it in, draymond is this in the context of what i said earlier about how like if you had to win one game or like just or like or the rest because that that's different than if i said like who are you gonna let's draft these guys for the rest of the for season. the rest of the season okay cool i i still think you put steph at one a and then ant at one b but it's not even close. I could literally be born and raised in the Bay. Two through six are all Timberwolves players. It's Carl, in no specific order. It's Carl, it's Rudy, it's Jaden, and it's probably Nas, I think. I think you could make a case that you would maybe still have like a Clay Thompson over a Mike Conley trying to just give the, the Warriors a bone here. but um, Or maybe a Wiggins because... He can oh, defend man. more than Conley, and now he's starting to get into overlapping positions and whatnot. But if you go one through five or one through six, it's one Warrior and five Timberwolves. And again, I would say that if I was covering yeah. La Liga. It is. I just Starting by win shares per 48, by the way. Uh -oh. Steph Curry is number one on their roster. This is guys who've at least played 100 mm -hmm. minutes. Mm -hmm. Draymond Green is number two. 
Looney is third just be, just because of his and sometimes these analytics will favor bigger players and just like their defensive presence and stuff, but he can't score. Mm-hmm. You know, he he'll rebound and he's not even a great shot blocker. So, but then you got to then it's like Saric, Moody, Gary Payton the second, Chris Paul is like eighth on this list. Clay Thompson's actually <laughs> one of the worst every down sort of players every every game yep. players in the NBA right now according to the analytics. So. You know, I don't. I, I I get what I've done here is I have caused a Wolves loss tomorrow night for sure. But now it's probably by twenty points, just by trash talking the Warriors so aggressively. But boy, yeah, but it's rough out there for them. As much as I said that I think the Wolves are now kind of in this weird spot where I just expect them to win. Uh, I don't want to. It's again this like Dallas Mavericks for example. They're playing much better than I thought. They were like the team I pegged to be the worst, but they've only at seven and two. They've only beaten I think one team above five hundred. Whereas, like, the Wolves have clearly beat the best of the best. Yeah. But to have to go back, I mean, it. I think there's a really good NBA stat that, like, over 70% of the time on these weird two-game kind of, not, this wasn't a back-to-back, but two games in a row against the same team in their building, it's almost always a split. Yeah. So, but then the Warriors and the Wolves have to go play the Suns on a back-to-back Wednesday night, and then they close it out in, in New Orleans against a pretty struggling Pelicans team. But I just say all that to say this is a tough five-game road trip. Wemby, a couple Warriors, Suns. If you come out of it three and two, I think anytime you can go on a big road trip and come out of it above 500, that's good. If you get to four and one, like if you drop tomorrow, but you win the rest, that's awesome. Uh, but I will say people wanted this team before they would believe some people to stack early season wins. I don't want to move those goalposts now because they're stacking early season wins. So there's no reason with the day off, they can't win again tomorrow with how I think they match up against Golden State. But yeah, if yeah. you split in the next 72 hours, one win against the Suns or the Warriors that just keeps your head afloat in what is all of a sudden a weird watered down Western Conference. <laughs> um, it's, it's interesting. It, de- it really depends on what you think about. I mean, we just said what we think about the Warriors, but they're a playoff team and they might make it. Maybe they make a move and get yeah, someone else yeah. in to get some juice. There's a lot of guys that would love to certainly play for the Warriors, but you know, it depends on what you think about the Lakers and LeBron, Anthony Davis. Those two teams are kind of in a similar boat, and then you've got these legendary players that are in the Hall of Fame, but they're all, like, way on the wrong side of 30. But the Kings don't look like... The, I mean, dude, the Kings are, like, 15 points less per game than they were offensively last year to start the season. The Grizzlies are still without, for 15 more games, their best player, and they're 2-8. and eight. So it's just... It's, it's a the weird... The Clippers haven't won with James Harden. <laughs> like, I think they're on a five-game yeah. losing streak, and it looks... That's another team that just physically isn't as fast again you we are getting to a point and i of all the dumb things i've said and boy have i said a lot i was on this about a year ago that if you looked at the western conference again you pull out denver because they're a special breed it's an old conference there's a lot of the best players and biggest names are all on the wrong side of the age thing yeah and that's another clippers thing it's like yeah i'm Sons. sure i'm sure a 16 year old who runs a popular tiktok account would be like oh harden and Kawhi and paul george like yeah that team is booty like they can't rebound <laughs> they can't defend they're out of shape and i can't i'm salivating at the opportunity for the wolves to play the clippers because they're going to grind them into dust and they're going to attack the the glass i think the wolves did get out rebounded last night for the first time this season um and it didn't matter but that was kind of a cool early season trend for them to just do something that was essentially their Achilles heel for the last couple of years. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't want to, I don't want to close this podcast or anything without just, again, Rudy was 10 and 10, 10 points, 10 rebounds, five blocks last night. There was a play, I think in the second half, I don't know who it was. I think it was like a bench player, but he got into the paint fill and he did like six pump fakes. I think it was Sarich. It and was. Rudy was just down and it was like, <laughs> right. it was the epitome of the Rudy Gobert experience right now. People are just frightened. They don't. They have no. He made the bucket, by the way. Oh, he did. I, oh, well, that ruins but the take. It doesn't ruin the take because okay. I, 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 if we're thinking about the same play, it was like he pump, like glitched pump, out. Pump, yeah, pump, I thought pump, the computer yeah. broke. <laughs> and he winds up getting the bucket, but it just illustrated, boy, look how hard it is for Golden State to get a bucket mm-hmm. last night, and that's how every team feels for two and a half hours playing this team. You're going to get buckets. You're going to score 100 points. It's the NBA, but man, like it's it's a grind to just. So, God, it's a grind to get to 100, and then these these guys might score 120 because they got Anthony Edwards and Cat and, and whoever else running around. And on that guy, Cat, uh, 21 points, 8 for 14 shooting, 14 rebounds, 1 turnover, 
when the body language is bad and the energy vampire shows up, we need to bring it up. But when he is just playing good basketball, especially, again, for all the things we criticized Carl those first couple weeks, and I think they were deserved, last night was a pretty chippy game, especially the Warriors just trying to get things started and try to mess up the Wolves' mentality and get technicals. Maybe the most mature player on the court was Carl Anthony Towns. He he just just played. played basketball. There was a there's a photo running around the internet. It's like the twenty three twenty four rim protectors so far, and it's like rim defensive field goal percentage and and defensive field goal percentage versus expected. Carl hasn't had the most attempts at the rim, but he is. I'll just show you this little thing on my phone. He is number one down there in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. He is the number one guy right now protecting the rim, not on volume, but on expected field goal percentage. He had a moment last night where he went completely straight up and I think just like stole the ball from Clay Thompson and forced yeah. a jump ball. His defense has been even better than his offense. So despite Brian Windhorst saying last week that the Wolves couldn't get even a first round pick or any pick for him, that's fine. We'll just have a really exciting uh, twin tower duo and just continue yep. to grind teams into dust while uh, other teams say that they would rather have Julius Randle. Yeah, if he can, if he can stay dialed in, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. don't go crazy committing dumb fouls. Just don't play basketball. Your mouth, just just put your head down, play basketball, knock down three, stay focused. Then he's a huge he's a huge reason why this team goes from being pretty good to being maybe one of the two best teams in the West. Hey, we got a few minutes left here uh, on this episode of Flagrant Howls. And by the way, if you haven't already, if you've mm. made it this far, maybe you like us. You really like us. <laughs> If you could give us a five-star rating and a positive review on Apple Podcasts, you can help us spread the word about this Timberwolves lifestyle podcast. Same for uh, Spotify. And uh, click the like button and the subscribe button on the Score North YouTube channel as well. Uh, what is Kyle's question of the week this week? Oh, I got a good one. It's more of a rant, but I will say I haven't caught up on all your Score North Vikings content today. Again, shout out to the awesome Vikings, yeah. but I do want to It's pretty say- much just Ode to Joy blasting and Judd waving a flag for... <laughs> I, I just want to say, as we do a cross sport or kind of cross pollination here, the Timberwolves had that debacle against the Atlanta Hawks on October 30th. On Halloween the next day, the Vikings traded for Josh Dobbs, and neither the Vikings or Timberwolves have lost since Josh Dobbs was acquired. So, dude, just 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 putting out facts. But if you want to know what my question of the week is, I have it written down, and it just says this is all I have in my phone. Paper straws, dot, 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 why? Like I get, when, when, when I get it, the point because we're trying to reduce plastics, right? And I am, I recycle, I volunteer, I, I don't smoke cigarettes. I, I just want that. I want to give the world to the next generation in better hands than I found it. But I think there's got to be other ways. Like if you want me to walk a couple more times to the gym rather than drive, why are we doing paper straws? They are ineffective. Yeah. So, okay. So we are, uh, we are, a, well, there's two ways to look at this. The one, there's like, if you go to an establishment, you don't have a choice. You get the straw that they give you, right? And sometimes, well, Starbucks does this mm-hmm, where mm-hmm. you'll get something and, you know, 10 minutes in, it's like the hole on the straw has closed because the paper has just like melted into itself. And now it's right. like, I guess, I guess I just take the straw. Like if, the like if you want me to eat soup with a, a spoon made out of ice. It's like, yeah, it's just not going to work after a while. This yeah, is it's stupid. Like, it's a paper straw, and there's a wet substance coming through it. And then there's, like, my wet lips and tongue Ooh. and teeth. That's <laughs> right. Know. Yeah, that's right. That's right, Flagrant House audience. Close up on my mouth. Well, <laughs> it's just, it logistically doesn't make sense. So so we do use straws in our household. We are a straw household. We like okay, to. Okay, thank you for admitting that. Okay. And so we moved off plastic straws. And we we did paper straws for a while because it was like, oh, let's try paper straws like five years ago. They just get all wet and they, you know, same problem. So we actually found some uh, like stainless steel straws that you can just uh, put in your. Okay. But the problem is, dude, like if you go if you go in aggressively, like I'm going to take a sip and like you could F your teeth up with those things. Mm-hmm. There's been a couple times where I've like gone too aggressive for the stainless steel, you know, dishwasher friendly straw. And I feel like I need to go to the dentist a couple hours later. So I don't know what the solution is. Maybe we just have to use plastic for certain things. I also need someone to show me an actual study that the the paper straws are that much better for the ecosystem. But I just I just wanted to bring it up. I, I love planet Earth. Uh, I want to do as much as I can. But also, too, I'm glad you brought that up because I did have someone clap back at me politely in the last, I would say, 14 days where I 
made a small gesture of uh, frustration about, can I get a plastic straw? And I was told, well, why don't you just bring your own metal straw? And this was seconds after they had flipped the iPad on me and said, it's just going to ask you a couple questions. And it's like, okay, so A, do I work here? And B, why do I need to bring my entire kitchen utensil set? Like, I'll tell you what, man, if you ever catch me bringing my own straw somewhere, that's probably not a good <laughs> indication for my own mental health. So, uh, yeah, I just, and, and see, Ross just chimed in. He said, this is the topic I care a lot about. Studies have actually shown that paper straws don't matter that much. I don't want to get into any other sort of political topics, but if someone wants to jump in the comments, DM me, like, I would like to talk about plastic straws versus paper straws because yeah. I really do think uh, the ice cube spoon analogy is like, why would I eat my soup with a frozen ice cube spoon? Like, why am well, I drinking out of liquids with something made of paper? We got to do something better. I crush my cans. I go to the recycling plant. Like, help me help you. Plastic bags, I get it. Like, yep. think about the size of a plastic bag compared to the size of a plastic straw. It's like 50, is it 100 times? How many plastic straws would it take to make a plastic bag? Mm -hmm. 50? 100? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Probably, yeah. And then the the volume of plastic bags that we use at grocery stores and Target and all these places. Like, I get, that's a meaningful change, getting rid of all those plastic bags. Maybe we just designate certain acceptable lanes to keep plastic around. And I think straws reasonably fall into that category. Going from trying to solve global warming by creating plastic or paper straws is something that Adam Silver would do. Yeah. He'd be like, hey, listen, I know our players, <laughs> our star players aren't playing, but what if we all got yeah. them cool underwear from Kim Kardashian? It's like, well, what if we just had the players play? Like, what if I just had the liquid go through the tube into my mouth and it didn't have a bunch of holes in it, uh, like a honeycomb? Okay, that was it. That was my question. Thanks, everyone, that was for good. listening. Was powerful <laughs> stuff. Yeah, let us know in the YouTube comment section, how do you feel about paper straws? And also the Michael Jordan, Anthony Edwards comparison to hit us up on that one. So uh, thanks for hanging out with us here. Flagrant House. He's Kyle. I'm Phil. And uh, we'll be back probably Thursday, I would guess. We're trying to time this up. We're mostly Tuesdays, Thursdays. But obviously, if the Wolves play yeah. big games, we may uh, change the schedule this week. So sometime later this week, we'll hit you with another episode, maybe even a bonus one of Flagrant House, your favorite Timberwolves lifestyle podcast.